Hey guys, Jake, Jake Go Back Knives. Just wanted to do a quick video on a new process that we have set up for black anodizing titanium. Uh, this has been a pretty new process for us, so we're just trying to kind of get everything dialed in. But I wanted to show you guys because I was pretty excited about how it worked out. So I'll give you a rundown on our current anodizing system. Uh, forgive the mess here. We're still moving into the shop, so <clears throat> it's a little bit of chaos. Uh, but basically, we run a tank that we built just basically it's probably four gallons or five gallons or so uh, fill it up with water put some trisodium phosphate in there mix it up into solution we have a copper plate separated by a little shield just to prevent accidentes uh, then we have a stainless steel rod run through the inside uh, usually just connect with an alligator clip or some wire nuts and then the ground side goes on that so basically we run that through um, and that gives us color so if we're looking for anything in the kind of the, the whole spectrum color spectrum when it comes to titanium anodizes that's how we get it now if we want black we have a whole new process set up for that um, instead of using trisodium phosphate we're using manganese sulfate um, same setup this is somewhat temporary but basically it's just Tupperware container obviously some titanium wire on an alligator clip I've got a pocket clip kind of down in the solution and then just the copper plate as the uh, cathode I think I always get the backwards the anode cathode so positive negative whatever it is um, realistically if you put them on backwards they just won't anodize so you just swap them around uh, so then for power supply, uh, we've got a pretty big power supply here. This is a 220 power, 220 volts, um, Sorensen. It's a huge laboratory sized power supplier. This might actually potentially be a, uh, server power. It's on a, it's got a rack mount, so I'm assuming maybe it was server, but it's old. Um, it was a couple hundred bucks on eBay surplus, but it goes 200 volts, 20 amps. So it does really well. Usually I just crank the amps all the way up and then I adjust my voltage to what I need it to be. I actually have a digital readout when I'm looking to get very specific colors. So I use a multimeter to get very specific voltages for color. Cause you know, you can go like 30 volts and 32 volts can make a whole different color depending on the sub finish that you have on there. Uh, so I'll go over blackening because that's the one everybody wants to know about and that's the one that we uh, recently discovered how to do. And the whole trick is basically high voltage with manganese sulfate solution as your electrolyte. Um, so base finish makes a difference on how black it gets. You can get gunmetal or you can get um, straight black. So as a comparison, this one Sam version two custom frame that I just finished is more of a gunmetal, and sorry the lighting in here is somewhat harsh, but it's very black. Uh, it's kind of like a well, it's like a charcoal, like a dark charcoal. Now this frame, it's an older Radford frame from production, is a DLC coating. So, sorry, it's got a lot of lint and dust on it, but that's a black Fallout DLC finish. So this is a coating, this is not anodizing. So comparing the two, you can kind of see in this lighting, even though it's, it's somewhat harsh, you can see this is a little bit more gunmetal, like charcoal. This is really black. This is a ceramic bead blast base finish. If I sandblast this with like a 120 mesh, uh, aluminum oxide it gets much more black black uh, so your base finish you'll have to play with that's going to give you a lot of difference in your final finish but I'll just basically give you a rundown and show you how it works it's super fast I've just got a copper plate hooked up on the backside I've got a sandblasted this is a 120 mesh or 100 mesh uh, aluminum oxide sandblasted clip it's already in the solution so we'll just Hang that up over there. Crank on my power supply. And it's roughly 100 volts. It's not really pulling much amperage here, so that probably means that I don't have a good connection. There we go. You'll see a little bit of sparks, and it changes colors. 
it takes just a minute maybe 30 seconds or so and just watch it bubble and if it stops bubbling for some reason like that it'll start back up if you give it a little wiggle and get a good connection to it and we now have a black part so let me turn the voltage off Throw that off here. We'll go wash it real quick. Should be wearing gloves for this, so I wanna wash my hands pretty quickly. I don't know how bad manganese sulfate is for you, but I try to not dip my hands in chemicals as much as I can. You know, safety tip. And there you go, we have black. So, pretty slick process. It's pretty durable. Um, it's, it's about as durable as your base finish. So if you do a stone wash part, um, or a bead blast part, it's gonna be pretty durable. Sandblast still scratches just like sandblast does, so you get snail trails and stuff like that. But hey, I got helped out. Uh, Mike over at Keybar gave me the rundown on the chemical. Uh, I've been trying to find this for years, so wanted to share the love and put this out there to anybody that's been struggling over the years to make titanium black. This is probably by far, in the last 20 years, of me making knives professionally this is the easiest and best way that i found because dlc coating i'm not a huge fan it's a coating uh it takes forever to go get it done it's many weeks of sending parts out and waiting for them to come back uh you know four six eight weeks sometimes ten there's a scrap rate of parts that just don't meet quality standards and it's very expensive to get it done so I don't really like DLC coating, but I do like black titanium. Uh, so this is a really awesome solution. It's durable, it's anodizing, it can be touched up if necessary. I can do it in-house, it's inexpensive, and it just looks cool, because honestly, I really like the gunmetal a lot more than I like the black. So hey, this is Jake with Jake Back Knives and Hoback Customs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it helps you guys out. Look forward to uh, putting more of these videos out here real shortly now that we're in the new shop.